You talking to me? Man, I guess it's that time already, isn't it? Well, we've got our Dodge on the lift. Let's get this thing apart. We're ready to get our front drive shaft out. We've already took our rear drive shaft out. I've got our fluids drained. Show you all in the video. I'll show you this while I'm draining it. See if I can stay steady. It's got the wrong fluid in it. And it's nasty. Got gear oil in it when it takes just your regular transmission ATF Dextron 3. So we'll be getting the right fluid back in this like like should. Go from there. On to the next. Um, here we go here. I like to bring Brutus to the party for this one. Never messes around, just goes in there, gets the job done. Almost tripped over my light, you don't want to do that. You know, you don't have to take these out. I like to take them out so I can check everything on them. Because this thing's very important. So this is what we call a double knuckle here. And this thing can go out and cause catastrophic failure to your transfer case, transmission, overdrive housing, extension housing, whatever you all like to call it. So that looks really good, actually. Let's get this thing serviced, or not serviced, let's get the pan off of it. This thing did not move, was trying to apply the lockup converter, or the lockup, when you put it in gear. When you put it in neutral, man, it had a terrible sound. Terrible sound, so let's see what we got in the pan. And here the pan bolts aren't tight really at all. I mean, no struggle. Probably why we got all this fluid all over the place is because our pan being so loose. A little bit of oil right on the lip. That's some moisturizer for you. Gross. Gross. Just happens though sometimes. That's why you want to make sure you keep your mouth closed. I've definitely had some oil in my mouth a couple times and it's not fun. The old good old hammer, where'd you go? There you are. Thing's been on there a while. Wow. There we go. Looks pretty nasty. Really? So there's no bolts in it, it's just that stuck. So, I'm gonna put that back in there. We're gonna try to get this broke loose a little more before I just pour fluid all over us. Okay, there we go. Try this again. Okay. Huh. 
Y'all hear that? Oh, hold on. I don't think there's supposed to be all that in the pan. Got some big pieces? You gotta subscribe and stay tuned to the channel to see what those pieces are. We're going to leave them in there for my dad. Shh, don't tell him. Okay. We'll leave them in there for him to find them. <laughs> He's going to laugh. Man, this thing's bad. It's definitely going to take everything in the kitchen sink on this one. Man, can't get that bolt started with these gloves. Okay, here we go. Some things get slippery with gloves. Them orange and green ones my dad uses, those work good, but I don't want to waste his gloves. And of course I can't wear extra larges anyways. Okay. There's the transmission pan. Looked pretty rough in there. I already drained that. I got a little video on that. I'll show you all what that looks like. We're just gonna give a little wipe on our pan here. Try to get it to quit leaking on us as much as possible. Yeah, right. Probably gonna leak the whole time until we get it replaced. Let's get this out of our way. Set it to the side there. Okay, so now we're gonna tackle our torque converter bolts. Um, like I was telling y'all guys, y'all talk about a tool that goes back behind the transmission on the adapter. I find it easier to use my old handy dandy screwdriver, and I don't know if y'all can really see that or not probably hard to see that but kind of already wore a groove in it because I use it so much but there's a place there's this plate right here you take it off you can see your flywheel and you can see the torque converter you take your plate off the back your engine plate here. And then we'll, I've got a crate. Like I was telling people, like, well, he's reaching. After you smack your head a couple of times, you'd rather reach than be bending down and trying to move around everything. So we're just going to take our hand and be careful, don't stick it in there far. We're then just going to take our screwdriver and just go. And then boom, there's our torque converter bolt. So I've already got one converter bolt out. Uh, just wanted to see what size they were. What about, uh, oh, there, there she is. Come on now, still in my sockets. Back over there. Okay. So let's see if we can get our converter bolts out with this. Should. Yep. Nice. So there's two. Same thing. We're going to have six of them. Should have six. And nice and easy. These things turn over really, really easy. A diesel doesn't have uh, much spring pressure, so they turn over really easy. And you don't have to get much bite.
Number three. That's four. I'm going for five. Now tell me that that other tool is faster than this. Because I'll challenge you in a race. And I guarantee it's not. Especially if I'm not dropping things. There's five. I'll grab it, I've seen where it went. And here's six. That's how you get the Dodge diesel torque converter bolts out. No problem. With a screwdriver. Trick to the trade. And now where'd our bolt go? There we are. Found it. We gotta find it now or might forget about it later. We don't wanna do that. Okay, so we've got all that loose. Now we're gonna get our jack over here. Get our transmission picked up off our transmission mount across member. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. It is probably 26 outside, easy, if that. And um, it's gonna be snowing today. So I gotta let it down a little bit. I'm gonna raise it up and let it down. I'm gonna step to the side. Y'all be careful while you're under the lift, okay? Everybody stand free. Set it down on our jack, just like we like. Let me get back over there. I don't want to get under my lift until I have my lock down. Lock down. We're good to go. Y'all guys made it safe. Okay. So as you can see here, I didn't get this on camera, or I think I did, but I didn't talk about it. I didn't even remove the bolts on this. They just were never there, look. Let me get my old flashlight. You can see the bolts weren't there. They never put them back in from whoever did the R&R &R job last time. And I mean, I'll show y'all here in a second. They didn't even tighten the bolts here on our main plate. That holds our adapter to our exhaust and everything like that. Pretty crazy. R and R guy wasn't very good. Last one, anyways. So let's get on to our main cross member here. Get old Brutus back out. Probably don't really have to. I just like to get a good solid hit on some of these. They can be rusted, and I don't have time to wait. And I need a good hard hit. Oh, about to fall over my light again. There's that. And these don't just fall out, so I'm going to show you all how to get these out. You actually have to use a, a frame press and pry it apart. from your mainframe. Okay.
Can't forget your little tin on your vacuum lines, but applies or engages your four wheel drive here. You just kind of swing these out of the way here and put them there. Okay, so we've got all of our bolts out of our cross member. Get our good old frame press. I'm gonna pry this bad boy apart here. We're gonna get our cross member out of there. I just like to get it as close as the transfer case as I can. The closer to the cross member, the better. And you'll see it, watch, it'll start just falling out of there. It's not gonna fall out, I gotta grab it, but watch, here we go. It's gonna just start falling down. Falling to one side, okay? So that's enough. Just a couple of pumps, we're gonna push up on it. We're gonna get our last bolt here. Last bolt, we're gonna grab it, slide it back, nice and easy. And that's gonna stay up there. We're gonna slide out of the way. Set that to the side. Guys, <laughs> I've done it before, but you only do it once. Don't forget to grab this before you release the pressure. Cause I'm telling you, if you're under there, you're gonna know it. That's just a good funny tip of the day. Cause I've done it. And it was an accident. Oh, I'm lighting y'all. No more light. Okay. So look, we can see here our bolts are loose. They're not even tight. <whistles> Hit so hard. Doing really well, guys. Now, this is that other plate I was telling y'all about. You can see here, whoever aren't hard at last time, they didn't even tighten this bolt down, didn't tighten that bolt down. These were all left loose. Those didn't even have the bolts in them. You can see all the dirt in the hole. Pretty crazy. What a great r, &R job. Okay. We're gonna get all to this stuff over here. They've just got this ran everywhere. The wiring was touching our front drive shaft when we first pulled it in. So we'll be definitely redirecting all of our wire because it's not ran anywhere how it's supposed to be. And then they've just got things tie strapped to cooler lines. And yeah, they definitely, they did a number on this one. See, there's some of your lines there. Those are your high <clears throat> vacuum lines that control your four-wheel drive. Bunch of electronics, or your speed sensor, the rest of your vacuum stuff here. Four-wheel drive linkage. Let's start getting some of these nuts off of here. Well, pretty tight. Not terrible. They don't have any shorty ratchet wrenches. You should probably go get some. They definitely work. And you don't have to go buy a Mako or Snap-on. I mean, we do because I break them all the time. I use them so much. But I'm pretty sure you can go to 
Harbor Freight, and you got to look at some of their stuff. But some of their stuff, they'll they uh, do lifetime warranties on. So they just got to pick and choose what you're looking at. But I mean, you can't beat your Snap On or Maco. I hate to say it. I love both of our guys that take care of us. And then, you just can't beat those either. You just can't beat them. Hate to say it. They were hiding from me for a couple days, so making it rough on me working. But I'm glad to have them back. Team looking stronger than ever. Looks like we're gonna have a stud and nut come out on this one. So I'll show y'all what that looks like. Really? I mean, right at the end. Might not even come out of the hole. Oh, it did. So we'll get that off there, get that back in the transfer case. Put it on the right. Okay. Got all those. Got to come over here, got to get our shifter linkage off, our bracket. I mean, I like wrenching, but it don't get no better than that. Wrenching keeps you in shape. I definitely don't miss a day of working out. It's either him or here or the actual gym. I'm always getting some type of a workout. Huh, this is funny. Okay. No, they did not. Yes, they did. Man, I really wish I could show y'all this. So, the transfer case and transmission are smashed together. Well, they put a bracket in between the transmission and transfer case. I'm going to get it out and I'm going to show you. Let that not hit me in the face. That would suck. Okay, we got one more and the transfer case is ready to come out. Okay. So we just got one more on our transfer case that's ready to come out. I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple more things off here, like our TV cable. This is what act controls the length of how far it shifts, early, later, and pressure rise. So. Spring off. And
I mean, it's just a walk in the park. I really like these, but there's just a lot to them. I feel like Dodge was still trying to figure out how to simplify everything, which I think that was everybody back in the day, trying to make it easier. So they're getting there. A lot of electronics, but they're simplifying things, but just a lot of electronics. So our fluid, our connector, I mean, it's totally full of fluid, which we'll show you. I just touched it. And I mean, I don't know if y'all guys can see my finger or not. Hopefully y'all can, but it's wet. Um, so that's a sign of the main harness in the transmission needs to be replaced. Okay, there's all that. Get our shifter linkage off right quick. Really? Everything's so hard and old and brittle in this thing. There we go. Cool. Nice. Okay, everything is looking really good. I'm gonna go get my other half and we'll be right back with the transfer case getting taken down and the transmission. Y'all gotta stay tuned. He should be coming. We're gonna go ahead and get uh, back on this thing, get a couple things taken apart, and we'll get the transfer case down when he gets here. I got it. I don't have time to wait on him. No time to be waiting. No, nah, we're just really busy. He's back there trying to get to a stopping point. So I totally understand. So these like to pour a lot of fluid out. One, the front one, well actually, it'll drain the whole converter. Oh, there he is. So we'll go ahead and get the transfer case out. Looks a little nasty on the tray. It's pretty nasty, sir. The connector's just full of fluid. Yeah. He's gonna get it all. It's it needs um, it all. Yeah. I guess you tell him we're putting all the shafts. And I was gonna get the works in the drawer on this one, guys. I was gonna, gonna let you surprise job. him. Yeah, you surprising him right now. What side do you want? No, I'm getting the heavy side. I just had to get my tools. Yes, sir. We're putting a triple disc converter, billet flywheel, billet input shaft, billet intermediate shaft, a real nice transgo kit in it. All new uh, solenoids and stuff like that. It's gonna be a really nice unit when we get done. So, so when you go to pull that out, just letting you know, they put a bracket in between the transfer case and the transmission. You see that pretty thing right there? Yeah. What yeah. That? We want to show. We want to show them. Them goofballs did that. I don't know. Whoever R and R did, they put it put it in between. Oh. They yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay. We got some good stuff for y'all guys, I promise. There's always something funny going on. And I don't know how they did that, but that's in a one in a million shot. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> Stab it like that. Everything yeah, I think so. Let's check her one more time over there. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna make you struggle. Let's get that vent tube off. That's the only thing that I forgot yeah, to do. I yeah. You just wanted to work out this morning, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to show you I could still do it. Uh, I thought you would. He's feeling great and better than ever, so we're keeping him alive. Agile. Yeah, there we go. I mean, you got to lift a little bit of weight. Oh, that's what I was telling him. You, you start figuring out when you um getting weaker. You need to start hitting the gym. Yep. Ready? I ain't start getting heavy. I set it over on the edge right here. That way okay. we can kind of turn it around. Yeah. Uh, Man. Oh, that shaft. Turn it around really quick. And 
I'm going to show you this bracket right here that they put between the metal housing, the two overdrive housing, and the transfer case. So they bolted it all down that was in there. This actually goes on this side of it once you get the transfer case in, but they Oh, yeah. no, they didn't. I guess the wire loom was hanging down or something. They just stuck up in the Yep. Perfect. They got lucky. But look at that in there. We got issues. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this shaft here is almost totally stripped out. Of the spines on the inside here. And so is that one. Oh, my gosh. So is that one there. We got some good videos to be giving y'all here. Oh, wow. That's Man, I know y'all can't see that, but. That shaft almost totally stripped right there. Yeah. And then inside here is almost totally stripped. So we're going to be doing the transfer case on this too. Keep you updated on that one. Yeah. So we're going to have to get another shaft here coming too because we don't have that one billet. We just got the uh, forward and the intermediate. So yes, we have sir. To get the overdrive shaft coming and the new hub and the uh, transfer case. So. I'm going to get on the phone, get them parts coming really quick because we want to try to get this knocked out this week. Trent thinks he's going to go skiing or something and enjoy him and his wife. Or, so. You hear that? He said wife. Uh -oh. Hopefully one day. Someday. Someday. We'll put this over here. All right. Hey, we got our bling bling showing today. We're I'm walking. telling you. They showed up out of nowhere. That's crazy, huh? Isn't that crazy? All right. All right. I'll have her to your bench in... Uh, Couple minutes. I'm gonna go and take you back there. Sounds good. You already dipped, you already drained the paint and stuff. Yes, sir. Oh, you've got a surprise in the pan. Oh, uh, yeah. It was whining real bad when we came in the door, so. Yep, it's gonna be a surprise for you. I left it in there. Okay. Alright, guys, let's get the rest of our bell housing bolts off and then our transmission lines what i was saying is these are going to pour out heavily so we're going to come over here and grab a couple buckets i keep bu oil buckets around just in case for this stuff so oil bucket oil pan you know never know i like to keep a clean house if i can catch it before it makes a mess i will so We can get our lines restway off here. Perfect. Here, hitting that pan. It's like bullseye. And I like to just give me a paper towel. And I'll just split a half a paper towel, grab it, roll it up. Come on. Work with me. It's because I'm on camera. All right, there we go. And so I'm, so I'm not leaking all the way to his room. Nice and easy. Just like that. And I just tuck it in. That's one. And we're gonna go on to the next one. Now this one, it will just pour out. It'll actually drain the whole converter if you don't plug it. So I think I have a good big plastic cap for this one. We're gonna wanna use it. I'm gonna go ahead and get my clip off my cooler lines as well at least off one to where they're separated and they can move now makes them a little easier to work with a prevent line I was telling y'all I have a um, cap in here somewhere where did you go I think that's it okay one of these two all right So we've got our cap, now we can go ahead and proceed taking this out because it does, it makes a mess.
right in the bucket. Nice shot. And then if you smell of a cap. That'd be this one. Heck, I don't know. Okay, so I guess I don't have the right caps. We're just gonna do the same thing. I just don't like doing this on this front one. Because like I said, it will soak up the fluid. There's a lot of fluid behind there. It's the converter fluid and it's going to leak out. So after a while, it's going to soak up and start leaking out our napkin. So as long as we get it back there quick, it should be okay. It's not going to leak all over our floor. As you can see, it quit leaking. We'll leave our pans down there just in case. Okay, so we'll get all of our tools back on the car here. You gotta have everything in line. Uh, can't work with a messy cart. It's crazy how that works. So, okay. We're ready for some big boy action. Time for a couple bell housing bolts. And then we're gonna get our strap on the transmission. Come on. Got our vent line. This is your vent line to the transfer case. Toss that out of our way. Or bell housing bolt over there. And go for our transmission bolt now. For our dipstick tube. Well, maybe. Okay. There's pressure on that. Now we're gonna get our dipstick tube out of there so it's out of the way. Really? There we are. Man, I'm telling you, these bad boys right here, if you don't have any, get you some. They're like needle nose, but they're like crab pinchers, and man, they work. I got a big, medium, small, all kinds of goodies. You just gotta use them. You gotta have them tools for the, the job. It just makes it easier. If you don't have the tools for the job, and you're trying to do the job, man, it can make days really stressful. Okay. Oh, well, maybe. We got that nice and tight. One more time. Nice and tight. Go ahead and pull the rest of our bolts out. Everything's looking good. Okay, here we go. We're on home stretch.
Okay, looks like all of them are out. Here we go on our last one. Nice and easy. <laughs> really? <laughs> These gloves are slippery. They got oil on them. And then that bolt's got oil all over it, so making my day hard on me. Okay. So we've got all of our bow housing bolts loose. Go ahead and grab a couple that didn't come out. They're magnets. Sweet. Okay. Looks like all of them. Okay, we were broke loose from the engine plate. That looks good there. Now, these are a little bit of a task to get out of here, but we make it happen. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Man, what a mess. Yeah, see, y'all think I, all of them were clean. They're not all clean. Let me run and grab some rags real quick. I'm telling you. Talk about a mess. <clears throat> well, there well, you go. That's how you get a 46 RE out of a 96 four-wheel drive Dodge Diesel 12-valve Cummins. It has been rebuilt before. The thing is, like, ridiculously nasty. Um, but we got it out. We're going to get it tore down, see what kind of damage we really got in the transfer case and transmission, and get back with you all. Y'all stay tuned. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that notification button. You don't want to miss anything. So y'all guys stay tuned and have a great day.